Hey everyone, this is Andy from WastedPotential.com and I wanted to give you guys a quick run through on how to set up an ActionScript 3 project in IntelliJ IDEA. There are a couple of uh, quick tricks to it and so I thought I'd give you guys a quick run through and show you a couple of things I've noticed and figured out. Um, I have recently switched to a Mac and that's why I'm using this for ActionScript 3 support. Uh, if you're on a PC you should be using Flash Develop. It's free and it is by far the best ActionScript 3 uh, IDE on the market. It's awesome. So if you are on a PC and you're not using Flash Develop, you're, you're way behind the times. But if you're on a Mac, Flash Develop will not run for you. It's not a Mac product. So I had to find a different ActionScript 3 IDE and I was already using um, another product made by the same company called PHP Storm and I've been real happy with it. So I thought I'd give uh, IntelliJ IDEA a try. And just so you know, uh, there is a free version of this software, but this is not the free version. If you need ActionScript 3 support, you need to pay for the full version of IntelliJ IDEA. But um, it's a very reasonable price. It's 200 bucks for the full suite. Um, that license basically pays for um, your license forever, assuming you don't upgrade to the next version. Uh, if, right now, they're on version 12. As long as I stay in version 12, this will run for me forever. I can install it on as many machines as I want, as long as I'm not running more than one of them at the same time. Um, it's a very, very reasonable licensing scheme. And so I highly recommend you support these guys. They make a great product. It's um, Imagine if Eclipse was not totally broken and didn't suck. Well, then you get IntelliJ IDEA. So anyway, let's go ahead and start creating an ActionScript 3 project. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you, I already have a project here. This is my Finder window. I actually already have a project here, an ActionScript 3 project that I've been working on. Um, I actually worked on this, it's pretty old. It's Even though these files say 2013, um, most of these files were actually from last year. This is a demo that didn't quite really work out the way I wanted it to and I kind of gave up on it. But uh, this, is, this is all my ActionScript files, my source folder, all this stuff. We're going to see how to set this up in IntelliJ IDEA to run. So I need to create a new project, even though I've got files already, it's still considered a new project. And as soon as I click this, I get, here's all my options. You can see all the things that IntelliJ IDEA does. It actually does more than this, but these are the main modules. Everything you build in here is called a module. And I'm going to build a flash module. I'm going to give it a name. The name is just for my reference. It doesn't really have anything to do with the files per se. So I'll call it test AS3 project and I need to point to where it is. Now this is important. My project is in this folder. It's in this SVN project folder. Now, IntelliJ IDEA is expecting on ActionScript projects that you will have a folder called SRC and that that folder will contain your ActionScript. Okay, these other folders don't need to be here. They're actually extra. But you must have a folder called SRC for source and it expects your ActionScript 3 stuff to be in there. If you don't set it up this way, it's going to give you a lot of trouble. So you're going to choose the folder that contains the SRC folder. Do not choose SRC, or again, you're going to have a lot of problems. Choose the game that holds it, or the, the game, the folder that holds it. Okay, and then I'm just going to say next. There's some more settings down here. I usually don't worry about them. So click next. Your target platform is going to be web. Uh, I don't honestly know what these two do. This is a pure ActionScript project in this case. If you have an FLA file, like I have over here for a, another project, if you have an FLA file, it is not a pure ActionScript project. But if you do not have an FLA file, if your project compiles purely from ActionScript, then you'll check that. Output type, generally speaking, you're going to be doing applications. Uh, you need to have the Flex SDK installed. That's real easy. Just do a search on Google and figure out how to install it and then click your little dot 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 buttons here and point to it. Once you do that the first time you never need to do it again. You've got target flash players. I only have one option in here but that's because I've only got one flash player installed on this machine. Uh, if you've got multiple versions installed, flash player 9, 10, 11, uh, they would show up here and you can target the different versions. I'm not going to create a sample app in this case because I already have an application. If you were starting from scratch, if you had nothing at all and you needed to start with a single ActionScript file, this is how you'd do it. You'd say create sample app and give it a name. 
and I generally give my things in a name of main. That's my main class. But in this case, I'm going to uncheck it. And then there's all this stuff about creating our HTML wrapper, the Flash Express install, etc. Um, I don't use that because I set that up manually myself. Click finish. All right, it's loading up. I'm gonna close this little window. Now you'll notice. It's got all my folders in here. Here's my project setup. Now it's added a couple things in here. It's added this .idea file. That's a IntelliJ IDEA uh, project file structure thing. Uh, just leave that in there. This IML file is also an IntelliJ IDEA thing. Uh, just leave them in there. They don't do anything. But if you have a um, if you have this setup on Git, then you would want to add these things to your Git ignore file because they can cause problems for other people. Uh, this AS3 proj file is just an old flash develop file, it's actually trash, uh, but I'm going to leave it in there for now. And my source folder, etc, etc. You can see I've got my media in here, that's my uh, my sprites and things for my game. Uh, I've got lib folder which doesn't have anything in it right now. Bin is where I publish things to. Uh, that's what I prefer to publish things to, so I have, I that's a standard setup, I use a folder called bin. Flixel sub, this is uh, Flixel action script library. Now the reason why I don't have this in my source folder is because I have this set up, I want to set this up as a git submodule. Basically if you have a git submodule, if I want to tie this into um, a git repository that gets automatic updates and things, uh, I need to have it in its own folder. So I can't put this down in my source folder even though I would like to. And that's going to cause us some problems which I'll, sh I'll show you how to fix in a little bit. So. Well, let's go ahead and just try and compile it. I mean, I've got this all set up in here. Why not? Function shift F10. Bonk. It doesn't like that. First thing it's telling me is I don't have a main class specified. Basically, it doesn't know uh, what class I should compile as my main class. Um, it's saying I don't know where this project starts, so I don't know how to compile it. Well, let's go in and fix some of this stuff. You go to File, Project Structure and it opens up this window. Now, see, it's already telling me down here that I don't have a main class specified. So I've got to do a couple things. Obviously, this is my name. I can change it if I want. I'm not going to bother. One thing I'm going to do is my project compiler output. It's going to try and create this folder automatically called out. I prefer, again, to call mine bin. That's just standard flash setup. Uh, you have modules. We're going to come back to this. There's a lot of important stuff in here. Libraries, I don't have any libraries. I don't know what facets and artifacts even do. I've never used them. SDKs, I don't touch. Global libraries is if you're using libraries that are um, that are global to every project. So say I had, and I do have a couple libraries I use for almost every project. So I could put them in here and then not worry about putting them in every project individually. But um, I don't like to do that because I like my projects to compile. I like them to be all self-contained so that if I hand off the files to someone else, they don't have to hunt down these libraries to make it work. Um, so I don't generally use global libraries. Uh, if you work um, by yourself a lot, you may decide that this is a quicker way to do it. Let's go back up to modules because there's a lot of important stuff in here. Again, first thing, notice it's expecting this source folder. Luckily, because I had a source folder in here, it found it and it says, oh, okay, everything's cool. Um, if you don't have this source folder, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Now, here's something important. There is some stuff we still have to do even though we have, we have to specify our main class, we have to do a couple other things, and I haven't figured out where to do that. Well, it's actually kind of hidden. If you come up here to the second column and you drill it down, you have this Flixel Game SVN app. This is actually where all your settings are. It's kind of hidden in here. It took me actually a while to find it, and there's not very good documentation online about where this is, which is why I thought I'd show you guys. Again, my name doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave that alone. Here it is, main class. I can tell it where my main class is. Click the Browse button. I can either search by its name, or I can just go to my project tree and find it, which is what I usually do, main. So now it can actually find my main class to compile this thing. My output file name, uh, I don't need 
underscore SVN on my file name. So I'm going to take that off. Again, it likes to put uh, this out production blah 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 on here. I don't like that, so I'm going to change that to bin again. I can change, I can decide later if I want to use my HTML wrapper after all. I can check that. Uh, runtime loaded modules, I don't have any. I don't usually check skip compilation because that's a little foolish. Uh, compiler options, there's some stuff in here. Again, I generally don't touch any of this stuff. Dependencies. Okay, the main dependency you need is the Flex SDK. That's no problem. But we actually have another dependency in here, and I'll show you why we have another one. So I'm going to click OK so far that so it saves what I've put in there. But you'll notice something. If I come in here and I open my main file, it highlights a lot of stuff in red. Red means there's something wrong. It shows it here in red, and it also shows me over here on the sidebar all the lines that have something wrong with them. Okay, and what it's telling me is unresolved type, flex game. Unresolved variable or type, force debugger. Okay, so what it's basically telling me is it can't find this file. I'm extending a class, and it's saying I can't find this class, and so all this stuff that you are hoping to use from this class, I can't use because I honestly I don't know where it is. Now this is a big problem. Uh, there's two problems here. Number one is it's not going to give me any code hints and it's going to highlight all this stuff as red which makes it harder to see when I've got an actual problem. Because this stuff isn't really an actual problem but it's giving me so much red now I'm not even going to notice if I have a true problem in here. The other problem is it really can't find this. So if I try and compile this again, function shift F10, it's not going to compile. And the reason is because it can't find this stuff. You can see down here at the bottom, by the way, that it's compiling. It's trying to put things together. Got a little farther this time than last time because it knows where my main class is. But then it says, oh, the definition of your base class, flex game, could not be found. Well, the reason is because I don't have the Flixel library in my source folder. That's where it's expecting it to be. If I had it in here, this would actually compile and run just fine. But I've got it up here in this crazy separate folder because I need it as a git submodule. So I can show you how to fix that. It's real easy. Again, go to File, Project Structure, and go to Dependencies again. Again, we need our Flex SDK, but we can add a new one. So I can say, oh, by the way, you need this other library. So I come down here to the bottom and I click the plus, and I add a new library. Okay? And all I have to do is click on the folder that holds all the classes. So in this case, it's my Flixel submodule folder. I hit OK. It gives me this thing that says, hey, we checked your files and we found some things. Does this look right? I say OK. I say OK. As we come back here, hey, look what happened. All my red went away. That's awesome. So now it's telling me a couple things. Number one, it can now find this, which means it's going to compile. I now don't have all these red warnings, so if I open up some different files, I can now see, oh hey, there's nothing wrong with any of these files. They look like they're going to be in good shape. Okay, This is good because now if I get red over here or yellow or anything else, it's going to tell me, oh, there's actually an issue here, and I can actually see it. So when I click over here on this yellow, it took me straight to the spot where there's a problem, when I hover over it, it says, uh, I have an unused variable. Okay, well, I might take that out of there. I might go, yeah, I know that's unused. I'm not going to worry about that right now. But the other cool thing about it is, it gives me full code hinting. So if I come down here, I'm extending this Flex Sprite class from Flixel. So if I come down here and I start typing load, it says, oh, you've got a method inside of Flex Sprite called load graphic. Is that what you're looking for? It gives me full code hinting on that. So that's really great. It's really a nice IDE. It does a great job. Uh, I've been real happy with it. The other thing is it should compile now. So let's try it again. Function Shift F10. Again, down here at the bottom, it's cranking away. You can see it running. Uh, sometimes it takes some time, so you've got to watch down here at the bottom to make sure it's actually running. It's compiling it. Let's see if it actually compiles. Sure enough, it does.
And this, like I said, this is a busted game demo that I put together a while ago, and I had a bug in it that I, I went down a big rabbit hole trying to fix, and now it's actually completely broken. It doesn't work at all. So I'm not going to bother showing you any of this. But that's how you set up a project in IntelliJ IDEA, an ActionScript 3 project. Um, it is a really great IDE. I use it actually for everything. I use it uh, in my day job as a web developer to do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, PHP. I'm learning Ruby on Rails and I anticipate using it for that. It's really, really worth the 200 bucks you spend for it. Like I said, it's, it's basically Eclipse if Eclipse wasn't completely broken. Um, everything about it is great. The FTP works great. You can compare files with the live server. You can do action script support. Um, I've just been really, really happy with it as an IDE. So if you're looking for a good action script IDE on the Mac, or even a general purpose IDE for things like web development or Rails development, I'd highly suggest you check it out. Maybe check out a free trial of the full version, or even try the community version and see what you think of it. So this has been Andy for WastedPotential.com, showing you how to set up an ActionScript 3 project in IntelliJ IDEA. If you need any more information about game development or web development, check out my blog at www.wastedpotential.com or go to our YouTube channel at wastedpotential.com. Thanks.